Drawing or painting a grace piece of artwork takes time. It might even take hours, maybe days or weeks to complete a great piece of artwork. Your goal is or at least it should be to make that image as visually engaging as possible. I think that is the purpose of any piece of artwork to capture and to hold on to the viewer's attention. Yet the one thing that captures a picture's interest level more than anything else is ignored practically by immature artists. And that of course is composition. I think most of us are only busy thinking about what our picture's content is going to be. If it is going to be a portrait, it is going to be of whom and if it is going to be a landscape, it is of where. But as any photographer would attest, it is not the content that dictates whether you created something of interest, but it's the way the content is presented. Uh, the way content is presented makes all the difference. You can take the most mundane subject matter of the world and you can make it truly stunning by great composition choices. Conversely, you can take seven wonders of the world and you can make them look wonderless with poor compositional choices. Take a moment and think back in time when a piece of art or a photograph inspired you and made you take your paints and your pencils out. You might not know what inspired you. It's not something you can put your finger on. It's just the certain feelings that holds your gaze. I guarantee the photo or the piece of art follows principle of composition. These are the principles that we are going to cover in this video. So hi guys, welcome back with a really wrong break. So let's get back with NATA and JWE preparations for the year 2022. Although all these videos are applicable for all the design exams and courses. So like you've already read the title, this video will be divided into three parts. The first part will be about introduction to composition. The second will be elements of composition and the third will be principle of composition. So look out for all three videos and make sure you subscribe. So starting with the first question that is what exactly is composition? In a nutshell, composition is a way you arrange or present your subject matter in order to create a more pleasing and interesting image. Now you might say that things like pleasing and interesting are completely subjective. What pleases me can completely grate you and that's certainly true to a degree. However, there are a number of visual characteristics that trigger the same aesthetically pleasing response in all of us. It's those characteristics that we want to exploit as an artist. Throughout this video, we are going to cover a wide range of compositional guidelines. While it might seem like there are a lot of them, they mostly come back to just one core principle, creating a strong focal point. A strong focal point tells your viewer what the single most important thing is in your picture and then guides their eye back to it after they explore the rest of the image. Most compositional rules are there to help you create a strong focal point. On the screen, you must be seeing a few example images that I consider to be solid compositions. Images that I think will hold and capture your imagination. No discussion at this stage. After the video, come back to these images and apply the elements and principles of composition which we are going to learn next. So starting with, the elements of composition are the characteristics that make up a drawing or painting. Examples of these include 1. The shape of objects in your drawing or painting 2nd. The size of objects 3rd. Directional lines or lead-ins We'll come back to those later Next, color Then value how dark or light the color is And next is texture Starting with the focal point If you remember only one thing from this video It should be this Every piece of artwork you create from now on should have a single focal point, a point of interest that is emphasized over and above everything else in the picture. Think of the focal point as your reason for creating a piece of art in the first place. What's the one thing about the subject that captures your imagination more than anything else? That's what you need to emphasize. Yes, you can have other areas of interest within your picture, but they must not compete with your focal point. If anything, they draw the viewer's attention back to it. Here's an image where there isn't any focal point at all. 
your eyes do a quick scan on the above image find that there is nothing of interest and you move quickly on this image on the other hand has a clear focal point in the sunset and while it's still a fairly simple picture it's much more interesting than the first one if you can see the comparison between both the images now in the next image there are too many potential focal points and they are all competing with each other if i were to guess i would say the center flower was supposed to be the main subject but it's not emphasized nearly enough over the flowers surrounding it compare that with the next image the photographer has used something called depth of field to defocus the blue bells in both the foreground and the background so that one clearly stands out as a focal point while these examples are photographs as opposed to paintings i know which ones would certainly make a more engaging piece of artwork here's another example if you want to make a lemon tangerine and a lime interesting you are going to have to get creative and the following image certainly isn't that there are lots of things wrong in this composition but the biggest issue for me is that there's no focal point they all have equal weight so it's got no idea where to start looking and i have nothing to go back to after i have explored around the image years and improvement it's far from a mind blowing interesting composition but it does capture and hold your attention for more than the first example the photographer has used uniqueness to create a focal point she knows that the shape and the surface of these three citric fruits are all very similar so there's one way you can differentiate they are also three completely different colors there isn't one that stands around from the other two standing surrounding it So what she has used in texture the texture of the cut open line which is different than the other objects around it if she also would have cut the orange open on the right hand side you can imagine how straight away the focal point would have been lost because you would no longer have one single unique element This idea of having a focal point is very well known. It's probably something that you are already familiar with. But knowing you need a single focal point is one thing. Actually creating one that works is another thing entirely. I think what happens with a lot of artists is that they think that the focal point is obvious simply because of what it is. Take a look at this above image. It's obvious that the figure is supposed to be the main area of interest that we look at and we keep coming back to. But the big mistake is to assume that a focal point is created only through its content. The fact it's a figure or a face, a car or a house. Focal points are not defined just by their content. They are defined also by their characteristics. Those ingredients that we talk about earlier like either tonal value, their color and their texture. In this painting for example the focal point is probably the van on the left hand side it's a little bit far away a bit too far to the left and it looks like it's driving out of the picture but i think you'll agree this is what your eye is drawn to most however the original image isn't black and white this is the original image now there's nothing inherently interesting about the green light as an object essentially it's just a round bulb but because of its unique color and because there's lot of contrast between the green light and the black box behind it my eye is pulled very strongly towards it the problem i have now is that i don't know where i am supposed to look the van is more interesting as a subject matter and it's the biggest object in the scene but the artist is saying to me look here at this green bulb This image would work a lot better in my opinion. If the van drew off somewhere and there was just an impression maybe of some small parked vehicle on the left hand side, it wouldn't have made that impact. Here's another example. The figure here is obviously the focal point, but the bright sun at the top of the image is too much of a competitor. You can't gaze and appreciate the figure without the sun interfering with that gaze. To be fair, the photographer does not have a choice here, but as an artist, you do. You could choose to have the sun lower in the sky so that it backlit the figure. So now we are going to take a look at each of the elements of composition that I mentioned in the introduction. You will use those ingredients to increase or decrease the visual weight or punch of each other of a picture. In particular though, we are going to apply those elements to the focal point to make sure it really stands out. What you should end up with is a kind of checklist that you can use for your next drawing or painting. So here are some key takeaways. Every piece of artwork you create from now on should have a single clear focal point. 
Next, a focal point is created through its content and its characteristics. Next, common mistakes regarding focal points include no focal point, competing focal points and a focal point created through its content only. With these takeaways, we come to the end of the video. I hope these characteristics were really helpful and will add to your knowledge of design and art. This might not be direct questions to your NATA or JEE paper, but it adds a lot of value to answer with the right options from the observation questions. Let me know in the comment section what more topics do you want me to cover. Also, wait for the part 2 and part 3 of the composition video. See you. Bye.